there is life on other planets? Do you think there's life on other planets? Oh, I don't know. Would you like to think about it for a second? No, oh, not really. <laughs> Tell me, do you think there is life on other planets? Well, I'm not quite sure, but I suppose there would be. No, you seem definitely. You seem definitely. definitely. How do you see this life and where? Well, I've seen a flying saucer. You've seen one? Yes, when definitely. At Lane Cove. When, when was this? 1953. You don't think this is a figment of your imagination? Mm, several other people with me saw it. You all had the same figment. What did it look like? It was standing up there still. Just suspended in space. With colours coming out. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. And on today's episode, I'm going to be sharing one of my favorite cars out of my personal collection. We've been getting a lot of requests to feature a lot of different cars other than E30s, but like I've mentioned before, majority of the cars in the shop is E30s. So today we are going to be talking a bit about my E36 M3 two-door German spec. And I know you guys are excited, so stay tuned. It get hot in the summer, yeah. Hot in the summer. The winter don't stand no chance. It's hot in the summer, yeah. Hot in the summer. The winter don't stand no chance. Now you know there's always stories behind how you purchase a car so i want to tell you guys how i came across this car like i mentioned before one of my clients uncle ab has purchased four cars from me so i had an e30 bauer which looked like this obviously when i sold the car something that i must tell you is every time i sell one of my personal cars i need to replace it with something so that you keep your collection consistent or you look at the next best thing which is going to appreciate in value or something that you always wanted. So with my 3 to 5 i Bauer sold, I was on the market for something, but I wanted something different. Now back in the day, my personal dream cars, uh, when I was a youngster, was always an IS, Polaris, a VR6 and an E36 M3 German spec. I've never ever got around to owning a German spec, this is my first E36 M3 that I've ever owned. And the way I came about it is, I mentioned his name is Nicholas Musa. No, he's not my family, but I always refer to him as my inherited uncle. So if you're from Barberton or that side of the area, you'll know of him because he's got one of the most insane collections. His collection is so mental. He's got a few M5s, few E30s. He's got a Porsche. I mean, you guys can see the pics here. He's got an insane collection. So he, he mentioned that he wanted to sell a few of his cars. And the three cars that stood out for me, he had a silver 65 CSI that he wanted to sell. He had his M3 German spec that he wanted to sell and also his M Coupe Schwitzer edition. So naturally, I was in the market for another car. Contacted him, made arrangements, went through to go and see him. And when I looked at the car, the car needs work, needed work, but overall I liked the package. And for me, what stood out was the color. So the color in question is called Avers Blue, a very cool popular color with the light gray interior. So this is one of my favorite colors from the E36 M3. My first favorite color is the Deca Yellow, and then the Daytona Violet, and then obviously the Avers Blue and the black, I love the black as well. So naturally, it being a color spec that I desired, went through, had a look at the car, took it for a test drive, made him an offer, and he accepted the offer. But when I bought the car, I didn't buy the car with this set of wheels on. I actually bought the car without wheels, meaning he borrowed me a set of wheels to bring through because the current wheels that were on the car, I wasn't feeling it. So drove the car through from Barberton, the car drove absolutely amazing. It had a bit of a slight mess on the car, but overall it felt like an M3. It sounded like an M3, and I was happy because I replaced my Bauer, obviously. Now, before I get into the actual car, let me take you guys on a tour on why this car is so iconic and what it meant for BMW, and let's share a bit of the history. B 
BMW E36 M3 Coupe, particularly the German spec variant, holds a very special place in the hearts of automotive enthusiasts. Introduced in 1992, the E36 M3 was the second generation of BMW's iconic M3 lineup. Succeeding the E30 M3, the E36 M3 was produced up until 1999 with various updates and improvements throughout its production cycle and lifespan. Now here are some key features and specifications of the German spec BMW E36 M3 Coupe. Engine-wise, the German spec E36 M3 initially came equipped with a 3-liter inline-6 engine, producing around 286 horsepower. In later years, and a lot of the overseas variants, BMW upgraded the engine to a 3.2-liter version, which was also found in the four-door variation in South Africa. Now this increased its output to approximately 321 horsepower, not bad for a 90s vehicle. Now we all know M3s are renowned for amazing performance. This variant with its powerful engine, the E36 M3 was capable of impressive performance figures for its time. The acceleration was brisk, with 0 to 100 km per hour times ranging from around 5.5 to 6 seconds, depending on the model year and specific configuration. Top speeds were electronically limited to 250 km per hour. Now, the chassis and suspension. The E36 M3 featured a well-engineered chassis and suspension setup providing excellent handling characteristics. It utilized a McPherson strut, front suspension, and a multi-link rear suspension, offering a balance between agility and comfort. The German spec models often had tighter suspension tuning compared to their counterparts in other markets. Transmission-wise, initially the E36 M3 was available with a 5-speed manual transmission, though later models offered a 6-speed manual gearbox as well. Now guys, you'll notice in South Africa, our two-door E36 M3s, known as the SA Spec and the German Spec, came out with a 5-speed manual box. However, overseas, they were introduced to a 6-speed manual gearbox. And like I mentioned on a previous video, the four-door M3 came out with a 3.2-liter motor and a six-speed manual gearbox. Now, additionally, BMW offered an automatic transmission option, which was known as the SMG1. However, that developed a very bad reputation, which carried on over to the E46 M3. But the manual was preferred by enthusiasts all over the world due to its amazing engagement and control. Now the design aspect of the E36 M3 Coupe boasted a sleek and sporty design that has aged gracefully over the years. Its body lines were clean and aerodynamic with subtle enhancements over the standard E36 Coupe to improve performance and aesthetics. The M3's distinctive exhaust tone, flared wheel arches and aggressive front fascia differentiated it from its non-M counterparts thus including the side skirts. Now again, when you talk M3, you talk legacy. The E36 M3 is widely regarded as one of the most balanced and enjoyable M3 models to drive. I can definitely agree with that. Its combination of power, handling and everyday drivability has earned it a loyal following among enthusiasts. Today, well-maintained examples of the E36 M3 are sought after by collectors worldwide, contributing to its enduring legacy in the automotive world. No lie guys, the time to buy an E36 M3 is now. Okay, now the first thing, or the first two things I did when I got the car, 
the car initially came with a clear set of indicators and clear fender indicators and clear uh, rear tail lights by the indicators. So for me personally, I love Ember on a two door. So my mission was to get the Ember um, indicator lenses. So luckily these parts are available from BMW. So I sold my clear lenses and I then bought a set of indicators for the headlights, the fenders, and I managed to find a set of good second-hand taillights with the amber look. So for me personally, I like it. Back in the day, if you owned this car, you'd want to change it to clear that was a style. But uh, weird enough, this is one of the only cars that I would keep stock and original. Um, and that's the route I wanted to go with, which was the amber. Now, there is some work that needs to be done. It's not a perfect car, but mostly the work that needs to be done is the trim and the bodywork. So for example, the beadings are not in such good condition. So I'm definitely going to have to either refurb the beadings or I will replace them. Luckily, BMW has got a lot of these parts available, so you can purchase it. You can just give your VIN number, they'll pick it up and they'll even guide you as to what part is what, what the part number, etc. So definitely I'm going to be changing all the beadings on the car. And the thing that stands out to me the most is that the car desperately needs a good paint job. The car was painted in its life, but it wasn't a 100% paint job. So I am in future going to do a light repair on the body and I am going to respray the car. Um, now, the second thing that I did was I got rid of the wheels that I was not happy with and I managed to find a set of original uh, M3 E36 wheels. Now, something that you'll notice and uh, maybe you'll learn something. So on the E36 M3 two-door, this is the set of wheels that it came out with. And on the E36 M3 four-door, there's another set. The difference between the two sets is the BMW Motorsport markings. On the four-door, it doesn't have the BMW Motorsport markings. On the two-door, it does have the BMW Motorsport markings. Um, something as well that drew me to this, I love polishing the face and the dishes. So this was done already on the wheels. Um, so it's cool, it's lacquer, I love it. I think it looks absolutely amazing. Now there is something that is bothering me. I know I said I'm gonna keep this car stock, but I feel the ride height is a bit too high. So I will do a set of coilovers in future, but more so the tire profile is incorrect on this car. So on this car, we're running 205 40 17s. It's not the correct tire size. This is actually the correct tire size that should be on the car. So I will be changing the tires when I do get a chance just to give it the proper look and grip that the car needs. Now again, I mentioned the paintwork, so definitely the paintwork will need to be done. There's also a few other small odds and ends, like the rain tray I need to change. I've got to change this beading. Um, this, believe it or not, you can buy it from BMW, brand new, it is available. And I need to do alignment on the doors. So the nice thing about the door is, it's a pillarless or the front, it doesn't have the front window frame. So naturally when you close the door, the door is, uh, the window is supposed to go in. That doesn't happen. So I need to align the window and I need to have a look at the electrical problem on the window, but that is in future plans. So overall the car is hell of a nice, but I, I think I drive this car more than my other cars. I enjoy driving it. It gives me a fun drive. So I'll definitely be changing it in future, but it's not a priority now. Um, I want to take you guys to the back as well. You can see the ember. So this is the ember that I'm talking about. The daylight that was on here was clear. This is the ember set. And overall, the car is nice. It's got the stock exhaust system. Another thing as well that I will be changing is this surround here. You guys can see it's a bit broken. And this is all the small things that pop out. Now you might be asking yourself, Chuck, why did you buy a car that needs work? For me, from a price perspective, uh, the car was quite decent. I bought the car for a fair price, but also it leaves me room so that I can spend money on it and the car will still be valuable at the end of the day when I'm done with the car. I want to take you guys now to the interior and I want to show you guys exactly what makes a German spec and 
why I love this seat so much. So luckily for me, the interior was done. So the steering wheel was trimmed in leather and Alcantara, the gear knob in Alcantara, the handbrake boot and gear boot in Alcantara, and the seats were done in leather, similar to the old color with the roof in Alcantara. So there is a few interior bits that I'd like to redo. So the seats, I'm gonna give them a nice deep clean because I'm happy with them. I wanna actually redo the roof liner because there's a few creases and a few areas that was cut when it was fitted so that I'm not 100% happy with. The sunroof tilts up, but it doesn't open all the way and there's a cover missing, so I need to get that cover. Also, a common problem on the E36s is your cubby. Your cubby always gives problems, so I need to repair this. You guys can see this has a bit of an issue. But overall, the interior package is quite decent. It needs a nice clean, but I will do that once I am ready to paint the car. Don't ask me when am I going to paint the car or attend to this car's issues, because the shop is busy. So unfortunately, this car will have to wait. Now, if you remember on the previous videos, right, uh, of Warren's E36 M3, I showed you that the four door came with the wood grain pieces. This is the two door. It does not come with the wood grain trim, as you can see. So there is something that I'm toying with. Should I put the wood grain? Should I not put the wood grain? Should I maybe modernize it and go with the carbon fiber? But then again, I don't want to change too much of this car's originality because they are more valuable when you keep them original, just like a 325 IS or any vehicle. Um, there is a few other small bits and bobs, electrical wise, that we need to get sorted out. I will attend to it definitely when I do have time. But for me now, the main thing was to get the car running 100%. Um, so what I did is because we're so busy, I sent the car out to someone that we outsource work when we are busy. Um, and he sorted out the misfire for me and he sorted out the handbrake. So now the car is running absolutely phenomenal. It's a type of car where I'm confident to say I can jump in now and drive to Cape Town and come back. I won't have any issues. There is another issue that I picked up. The aircon doesn't work. And there's a lot of heat coming from the dashboard area, which is something that I will need to attend to. But overall, Guys, an IS drives amazing, but an E36 M3 drives just as good. And uh, I enjoy driving this car, I'm not gonna lie. It's a phenomenal car. And I think personally, if you are in the market at an E36 M3, the time is you need to buy now because the prices are going up significantly and they are going to climb. You must remember the market works such where 3 to 5 ISs have become ridiculously priced now the next best thing is the generations that grew up and never could afford now they can afford they grew up with these type of cars so now there's a high demand for e36s so if i had to give you investment advice invest in the four-door e36 m3 invest in a e36 328 cabriolet or 325 cabriolet and definitely get yourself a two-door m3 because i promise you these prices are going to climb like you can't believe. In fact, some examples I know personally have sold for ridiculous prices purely because of their condition originality. So that's my investment tip. Go for it. Get your hands on an E36 M3 or Cabriolet. You won't regret it in the next five years. Okay, guys, that's come to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Some variety for the channel. Um, I'd love to hear your opinion on the car. What do you guys think? Are you an E36 M3 fan? Do you think my prediction is correct at where the market is going to go? Also, if you are an E36 M3 fan, what's your dream spec? Comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And of course, we really appreciate everyone's support, interaction. We love you guys. Thank you so much for all the champs that are always commenting and interacting with us. You guys keep put a smile on our face every time we read your comments and we respond to it. Guys, be safe and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.